Hi, my name is Pete Sampson, and I am the owner and creator of My Music Office, the best way to organize your music program online. In this video, we're going to take a very detailed look in the financial information area of the system. So here we are on the main menu. I'm going to scroll down and click on the icon to get us into the financial information area. You'll notice here across the top, your menu system includes uh, choices to view register, browse fees, assign fees, add fee, add payment, reports, search, transfer, and options. The first thing you see when you log into this area is that you will see the actual financial register. You'll notice by default, accounts with balances is chosen. That way you can see the students that have balances due over students with credit or view all accounts. Below that, you'll see a quick last name select, very similar to the student information area, where if you want to go and pull up a student by their last name, you can, and then go to show all to get rid of that. Over here are three drop down quick selects. One is to show active and inactive. Inactive students are chosen in the, in the student information area uh, where you can make a student inactive either by individually or when they when you do use the rollover utility uh, at the end of the year, it can make all of the uh, highest grade in your school, whether that be eighth grade middle school or 12th grade high school or whatever works for your school, uh, inactive as well. What inactive does is it hides all their associations with all the things like lockers and instruments and music and uniforms, but it keeps their financial information and their contact information. So even if a student is hidden from plain view, you can go to show inactive and then it'll show all the inactive active students as well because sometimes they might uh, either leave your school or graduate from your program and still have a balance due and you want to go and be able to collect that that balance due. You will also see the number of items per page and the page choices uh, which is normal for all of the listing uh, areas of my music office. Here you will see name, grade, phone number, parents uh, slash guardians, balance and you can sort by all those by clicking on the uh, header of the column. If you want to see a student's statement, you can click right here and that will bring up an actual printable statement for them to be able, for you to be able to print on an individual basis. The area right here at the top and uh, is, is customizable and there's also an area down here which is also customizable with text uh, so you can actually change uh, the information that is on the, on the statement to see, uh, suit your needs based on whenever you want them to be able to, uh, to take a look at that statement. The pencil icon allows you to view the, view the details of that person's account. If you want to add a fee, you can hit the plus icon, or if you want to add a payment, you can, add, you can click the dollar sign icon. If I want to see the details on this account, I can click here and I will, it brings you to another list that uh, gives you the ability to see everything that's been on that person's account. And you can make edits or print receipts uh, based on what you see here. So if it was a payment, a credit, or a payment, you can go and print a receipt. So if I want to print a receipt right here, this is a nice quick printable receipt you're able to generate. Or if you want to edit this and make sure that uh, that it say something was wrong with it, say the name needs to be changed or the amount needs to be changed, or put something in the comments, you can do that as well. I'm going to cancel out of that. You can also remove a fee or a payment from a student's account by clicking here, or you can do check, box, check boxes over here and do multiple at a time by clicking the icon down here. In the Browse Fees area, you're allowed to see the fees you've created. In My Music Office, you create a fee and then you assign that fee to either a student or an ensemble. And so these are the three fees that have been associated with this account. You have a Disney trip payment fee, a movie fee, and a show choir participation fee. You can edit those fees by clicking on the uh, pencil icon or delete them with the X. If you want to add a new fee to the system, you can click up here, or you can also click on the Add Fee button in the main menu. So if I want to add a fee, I click here and I can title the fee. I can call it 2020 Marching Band Fee. It'll be $250. I can put a fee starting and due date if I wish. Uh, the starting date will appear as the date uh, that is put on the statement, and then the fee due date will show up on the statement as well after the fee. And then you can put a description if you, in if you wish as well. So I'm going to add that fee. And then when I go back and browse my fees, you'll see that fee has now been added. Now when I want to assign that fee, I just simply go to Assign Fees. And this system looks very similar to assigning an instrument or music or uniforms to a student. Click here. I'm going to go up to Assign to a Student. And I can choose an individual student here if I want to assess a fee. So I can go down to one of the students 
it shows all the fees that have been assessed to that student over time, but then I can go and add this new marching band fee by clicking add. Okay. Um, if I, now that I have actually put it in the system, uh, that is now associated with the student. And when I go back to view register, you will notice that and I print a statement off, you'll see that marching band fee has been assigned. If I want to assign a fee to an entire ensemble, all I have to do is just choose the name of that ensemble. So if I go down here and I say marching band, then I can say I want to assign the 2020 marching band fee of $250 to the entire marching band. And when I do that and I hit add, that's now been assessed to every single member of the marching band. And so when I go over here to view register, you know the amounts have gone up by a decent amount. And if I go on that account I just looked at, now there's actually two marching band fees on there. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and get rid of one of those. So I'm going to go and I'm going to find that student. I'm going to view details and I'm just going to remove one of those marching band fees. And now it is gone. It is worth noting that once you assign a fee from the system to an ensemble or to an individual, that is no longer able to be deleted except in their actual account. If you were to go in here to the ensemble and go to marching band and say, I want to get rid of this fee, it is not going to remove it from all of the accounts. So when I go here, notice it is still on all of the accounts in which it was on before. Once it is assigned, it now is on the individual account and you have to deal with it in an individual manner. Down here under assigned fees, you also have a function called the reset student registers and assign a starting balance. This is great for if you want to start the new year on a clean slate or if you're just starting my music office and you want to uh, put in a starting balance. If you click here, you will then see all the students. Okay, this is their current balance. And all you have to do is check either all of them or none of them or individually which students you want to do this with. And then say I'm going to go ahead and do it with this student right here. I'm going to go and then say I'm going to reset that student's register and put a starting balance. And I say OK. And now when I go in and look at the statement, all I'm going to see is starting balance. And then it has the, the fee that was there. All the other amounts are gone. This, some people like a very clean year by year uh, statement. Some people like a running statement that shows everything for their entire time in the program. I prefer the latter personally in my program, um, but I wanted to make sure that everyone had the option to do what they wanted. So we've already added a fee. We've already done that. To add a payment, all you do is click here and you can add either a credit or a payment. A credit would be something where money doesn't actually change hands. Okay, a, credit, uh, a payment would be when money actually changes hands. So if I say I want to do a payment, <clears throat> choose the date, excuse me, and then choose a transaction. Now notice all the other, all the transactions that have been in the system are already here. So you can actually choose it again to save you time. So if, let's say this was a, um, a band fee payment and it was for $200 and it was done cash, check, money, order, credit card, website, PayPal, Venmo, all these different choices here. Let's just say it was a check. Okay, I can put the check number in if I want. And then I can assign which student it's going to go to. Okay, if I choose show inactive students, this list will repopulate with all the inactive students in it as well. So you can actually make a payment to an inactive student's account. And then down here, notice this nice little check bar for email receipt to parents. If I click that, then all the parents on this student's account will receive an email receipt, a likely receipt you saw prior, automatically. Up here, you'll notice this wonderful tool called adding multiple payments to credits uh, payments and credits at once. This is a great way to add a lot of payments, especially if they're all the same type, to accounts. So let's say this is a credit for a candy sale. Every box was worth $20 and it was all done in cash. So I can go boom, 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 fill it down, and then all I have to do is choose the names. And remember, when you do a drop down, if you start typing, it'll go to that student's name. So you can actually go and just fill on all the student's name and hit enter, and now you've done 10 at once. It's a great way of entering really quick, especially like payments into the system. We have lots and lots of reports and statements that can be printed off here. And so if you look in the statement list, this is a very long list of a lot of different things. The first thing is just full student balances sorted by last name or balance. So if I say by balance, I can then view this report and you can see it starts with the person who owes the most and it ends with the person who owes the least and it gives them the total amount due for your program. If there's a negative amount in there, say there's a credit, that would just go against the total. If I go down here, I can see 
uh, only student accounts for with balances or student accounts with credit. So I can actually kind of limit the amount or I can see balances by ensemble and then choose the name of the ensemble. Lots of choices. Then down here you can see full statements for all students, full statements for active students only, full statements for an ensemble and you can choose the ensemble. And what I like this one is full statements for an ensemble with balances. So now I can choose the ensemble and it's only going to show the amount with, with a balance. So any negative of credits are not going to be there, but it's only going to show those student balances. And you'll notice here, it looks like one big long string of, of uh, statements, but when you go to print, it will actually pagnate it for you. You can see very easily it's going to pagnate it. I'm going to turn the, the, uh, the borders back on to standard and you can see it prints very very easily and then down here you can do custom reports um, based on a search function if you will but there's pretty much everything you need is going to be up here and this there's so many different choices uh, that are given uh, in this menu right here and this is how you would print all of your statements and then once again you can email statements through the communication area as well the search function allows you to search for a transaction the transfer function allows you to download only your financial database. You're not able to upload into the My Music Office database for financial because it's just honestly too complex of a system to be able to upload into. And it also uh, is tied so closely to the student itself, it's just not really possible. But you can download a total list of transactions here as well. And then in the options area, you once again have your global options for ensembles where you can choose uh, which ensemble types you are and, and remove ensemble choices from your list. And this is great for when you're trying to assign fees by ensemble. You don't need to see all the orchestra and choir choices if you're a band director and vice versa for the other types of, of musical genres. Down here below is a new feature for us, which is the online payment options. So you have two choices. You can either pay through an external website and all you do is you type in the, the address of the website, the full address of the website right here. And then hit enter. And that will present itself when a student logs in through the uh, family account in order to be able to go to that website in order to make a payment. And it'll actually open up a new window uh, for them to be able to do that. The other choice here is to actually make a payment through PayPal through My Music Office. And so what you can do here is you can put in the email address of the PayPal account for your organization. And then you get to choose which fee setup you would like to do. Would you like to do standard pay, uh, PayPal fees of 2.99% plus 55 cents? If you do this, then your organization would receive the full amount of the person who's paying. So if the person pays $100, they'll actually be charged around $103.85 and that extra amount will cover all of the PayPal fees for both collection and transfer for that. So your organization will receive the full $100. If you choose no fees, then you basically have said that you are going to, as an organization, eat the cost of using PayPal to collect your money. So therefore, uh, that amount, that $3, that $3 and roughly 85 cents is going to be completely um, eaten by the organization. So your payment in will be about $96 and something cents. And then down here, you can set a custom amount. So say you want to set a flat rate for the fees. So you want to say in order to use this, you're going to pay a $5 fee no matter what. Whether it's $5 or $300 that they pay or $2,000, uh, it's only going to be a $5 fee. So depending on the amount of the transaction, you will either make money or lose money for your organization on what you choose. And then there's also a custom percentage. Some people like to share the percentage with their or with their students and their families. So maybe it's only going to be a 1% or a 2% uh, tack on. And then whatever is above or below that would result in the amount transferred over as well. Please note that My Music Office does not take a single cent of any of these fees. It all goes, all the fees are PayPal's fees. And so uh, what you're doing here is deciding how much money you want based on what PayPal is going to charge you. Once again, My Music Office does not charge anything for, for providing this, this uh, structure for, with PayPal. So right now I'm just going to choose standard PayPal fees and then I hit save. And now that is saved in the system for this account. This is where you get to customize your statement. And so you can put, uh, it automatically fills in the basic information from your account. If you need to change that, say your boosters have a different address, a PO box or something they can put in, you can put that in here and the name of the contact person and maybe their title as well. If you don't want the band director's name on there, say you want the booster treasurer's name on there. And then this is where you can put as much uh, information for the bottom of the statement as you want. And notice it says basic HTML is allowed. So if you wanted to put in paragraphs and bold and underlines, if you are familiar with HTML, you're able to, you're able to do so right there. Hit enter to save. 
And then down here is the button to clear and reset the entire financial database. Uh, some people like to start fresh every single year with zeros on the accounts and nothing in the system. And so if you click on this, right, this button right here, it will literally wipe everything out of the financial database and you're able to start fresh. While I know there's a lot of things entailed in the financial database, hopefully this overview helped you. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us at uh, webmaster at mymusicoffice.com or put in a help desk ticket. Uh, remember, My Music Office starts at just $1.99 a year, uh, which is by far the most affordable price out there. If you do three years, you save 100 bucks. If you do five years, you save 200 bucks, which is basically a year for free. Uh, and you have the absolute best customer support. And the system, as you can tell, is incredibly easy to use, unlike some of the other people offering this service. So I encourage you to take a look at it. And, uh, and if you have any questions, contact us. Otherwise, have a great rest of your school year.